Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. And they have the game here followed by the open date on the calendar next weekend. And Charles, this is a crew that you have to think really is relishing the opportunity to be on the couch for a few days. Yeah, they certainly are. But let's face it, partner, they can't get caught looking ahead to that couch time while they're playing this one. They've got to take care of business first. Here's second and seven now from the 28. Car going to throw. Buying time to his left. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. And once he's getting the pocket there, he tried to keep those on his downfield, but nothing was materializing. So he makes a smart move and gets that to the sideline. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Here's Carr. to begin this game. Give up a first drive touchdown, go back out on defense, and completely shut them down to force a three and out. This is a way, but boy, headed straight for the sidelines. And this one goes angling out of bounds, and it will be spotted inside the 30-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And Charles, if the season ended today, and it's not going to, we still have December Yay, left. More football. <laughs> We're only in November. Uh, but they would be a wild card team. And that's great. They'd be in the playoffs, but you know they're trying to bump up to be one of those division leaders. That guarantees you at least one home game in the playoffs. And that Look at this. Middle of the field. A breakaway. He's on his way. Chandler, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Joseph connects on the extra point, and it's now 21-7. Minnesota's kick team ready, and the Vikings boom it away. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. Well, partner, fast forward with me for a second. Remember, next week they have the open week, so they're going to get some extended rest. Does that change how they manage the rest of this one? I think it does a little bit, but not by too much, because you're right. You get the extra rest, you get a chance to heal up and kind of you know, do a little bit of a reset for this team. But it's also seven extra days to think back to the last time you were on the field. So now, a little more importance on what they're getting done because they carry it with them for essentially two weeks. On second down, here's Carr. And that one too wide and incomplete. Had the right idea, they were trying to throw it to the sideline, but he let it just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The 
the Saints on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Shotgun now for Carr. And to find the open man. That's complete. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. 27 yards there on a very nice third down conversion. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. But I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They're starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. Here's a quick throw caught out wide. And he'll get this one down near the 20-yard line, just shy of the 20. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. And the slot man goes in motion left. Car to throw again. Out of the backfield, that's complete to Camaro. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. A big play there on the catch and run, and it'll move the chains. A lot of times the key is just get him the ball and let him do his thing, and they got it out to him on the left side, and he did exactly that. Excellent run after the catch. Now. From Viking territory now, they'll come up first and 10 as they're down to the 29-yard line. Kamara up the middle. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? From the 23, here's second and four. From inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far. Even backed up late, they're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them at the end zone as the first half winds down. to the air on second down. It's Carr. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. This will be play number nine of the drive. Here's 84 yards on third down. Throwing now is Carr. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Andrew Booth picks it off. And the Vikings are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20-yard line. The Minnesota offense about ready to get this next drive underway. Well, this offense looks like they have a little extra pep in their step as they take the field here for drive number three, because remember, Charles, drives one and two both ended in the end zone. Yeah, right now they've just got to be careful not to lean into overconfidence because every drive has a life of its own. But I like the way that they've started, the way that they're going about doing things right now. They've got a chance for that third consecutive touchdown, and that would be a crushing blow to the defense. Now second and seven from the 23. Leon. 
Cousins to throw it. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. It'll go in the books as a seven-yard loss on the sack, and it's third down. Now how about that? Defensive coordinator perfectly in sync, dials up a blitz, and the man in the middle, he's the one who gets home. Big Mike. Big Mike. So now after the sack, Cousins and the Vikings come up here third and long. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that's going to be incomplete. That might be the third down stop that they needed because they've had a lot of trouble slowing down this offense in the first half. This might be their opportunity to get off the field. So on fourth down, on is the punter, Ryan Wright. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here is away. On the return, it's Kamara. It's a return of five following a punt of 42 yards. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. The Saints offense on the field, ready to get their drive started. A big mistake last time they were on the field, tossing that interception inside the red zone and really taking away what had been a pretty successful drive up to that point. Yeah, and I don't think there's any question about it. As they head out on the field for this drive, that whole offensive unit is just thinking redemption. You know, they moved it really well, didn't pay it off. This time, they want to make sure that ball ends up in the end zone, and they're the ones possessing it. Good work after the catch. Gets him 15 and a first down. But they certainly made a point of getting him involved in the passing game here in the first half. They must have seen something in the scouting that said, hey, we can capitalize on him getting the ball possibly in the open field. And I think in the second half, that may loosen up the defense a little bit to get the running game going back inside. And now Carr changing the formation. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. Dorsett's got it. And he gets his down inside the 35 before going out of bounds. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll give him a short yardage situation here for second down. Here's Carr to throw. Looking left side and completing it to Thomas. And he'll be out of bounds just inside the 25-yard line. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. To throw its car. And that's incomplete. I know all players are taught from drive to drive, from series to series. Let that go, right? Only focus on the now. But when that ball was tipped in the air, there's no way they weren't thinking about the interception that was thrown on the previous drive. Could this turn into a second one? And if it did, that could really change the way this game was going. To throw his car. His throw caught at about the five. And he's down inside the five at the four before he's out of bounds. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. Quick throw, it's complete. And he is going to lose yardage here. 
Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. first half facing this deficit but at least they did put three on the board before half yeah it's a little bit like that stormy cloudy day and the sun peeks through just for a second they saw the sun there they're hoping to see a little bit more of it in the second half so with three seconds remaining in the half they will line up to kick this one away Nuwangu now from his end zone unable to corral him he fights through Time for a break. We've hit halftime. Two quarters down. Two still remain. We step aside. This is the NFL on EA Sports. And we welcome you back now. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gunn getting set for quarter number three here. Saints going to go on offense first, and they trail here as we begin quarter number three. Getting set for their next drive, the New Orleans offense. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. That's out to the left, flat and complete. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. No question that they're going to continue to look his way. Six catches in the first half, and now seven on the game. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. A tenth carry for Kamara. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. And they're going to speed things up here. They'll bring a tight end in motion left. They'll bring a tight end in motion right. Second down, and it's Kamara again. And he'll get a little over two, maybe a full three down to the 32-yard line. Oftentimes we play some offense for their variety and being able to hit people with a run in the pass. But in this game, how about what we're seeing from the safeties? They are all over the field. Doesn't matter if they threw it or if they're trying to run it. I don't think we've ever awarded an MVU most valuable unit, but you're right. It might go to them in this game. I like that. MVU. Well done. Inside the 20 before he's brought down. 
61 yards rushing on 12 carries for him now. Despite the score, despite the deficit, no quit in this guy. He's running angry, running through arm tackles. He wants to change what that scoreboard is saying. They'll give to Kamara here on the option. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. I think what we just saw there, partner, was linebacking speed that can trump O-line power. We see that at times because he filled the gap before the offensive lineman could get to the next level and take him on. Here's second and ten. They'll get this out to Kamara. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. He's already proven to be a factor in the running game on this drive. Now he gets involved in the passing game. I think what we're seeing here is the modern version of workhorse in the NFL, being able to run it and catch it with equal proficiency. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. Now he's going to be a yard short. Needed two, but only got one. Fourth down. In motion, the tight end. They'll send the tight end in motion left. Here we go with Kamara. And he won't have the touchdown, but he will have the first down as he's tackled at the two. Try to pound it in, Kamara. And he's going to get this back to the three-yard line and no further. They'll say no gain on the play, and it'll be second and goal. This is a critical sequence here for this offense. Things really haven't gone their way so far. This could be their chance to get back into it, but they've got to find a way to punch this ball in. The Saints offense and Derek Carr, they're still on the field, so they figure to go for two here. Now the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Gold to add the extra point. And he's got it to make this a 21-17 game. After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. Nuwangu now from his end zone. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Costs him about five yards as he's tackled it to 20. Vikings now to start their next drive. But Charles, they still have the lead despite their defense giving up a touchdown on the previous possession. And, and even though they have that lead, it feels like a back and forth ball game where to try to get momentum back, maybe they need at least three here on this drive. 
I think you're right about that, Brandon, because your game plan doesn't change. I do believe your urgency does because of the last score that went against your team. So what you want to do now is have your own drive and try and make sure that that momentum stays in your camp. From the 22, here's second and eight. to throw, Cousins. Oh, he tries to force it in and it's intercepted. It's the Honey Badger, Tyron Matthew. You look at there, the defensive back just maybe a step slower than he was when he came into the league a decade ago. I know I question his speed coming into the game, but what he's lost in speed, he's more than made up for it with intellect. And that's a great job of knowing how to position himself to make that interception. problems right out of the gate we're gonna get a delay well you got to think Charles that one's on the quarterback because everybody was up at the line of scrimmage he just didn't call for the snap in time yeah I think he needs a little bit better awareness out there because you got to know when the clock's in single digits and either snap it or get a timeout called if you have one now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game first and 15 your mind Now Carr, and that is incomplete. Oh, the coverage a little too good there, and it's second down. This is certainly a team that has proven it likes to target its backs through the air and defensively. They were aware of that and certainly right were now. prepared on that throw. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. 93. 618. Now Carr. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The partner guaranteed they approach this play with the idea of making up ground to make third down manageable. Unfortunately, with that incompletion, right back where they started on the last snap. Now they need a big third down play in order to pick up the yardage needed. Now Carr shifting his guys around a bit. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. Boy, a nice play there as they wind up converting on third and 15. Going old reliable there to the slot on third down. And the slot position has become the bane of just about every defense's existence because how do you cover? Do you go with the bigger guy to try and use size? Can I go with a, try go with a quicker guy and sometimes even get out quick there? Very difficult to match up with that slot receiver. That's why they keep going back to him. And he's had the hot hand. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you had. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. Carl will try it again on second down. There's a short one to the tight end, Johnson. They get seven out of that, so they're left with a third and three. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Now, Carr again. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Saints are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And in a lot of ways, that catch is expected. Red zone presence, and that one was realized there. You've got to find your tight end in that situation. As they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on 